Good morning to you. I am at a rest area. I don't know if you can see that in Wisconsin. I'm on my way home to the Upper Peninsula. I took a break. I went in the bathroom and I was leaving the stall and I hit my head on the door. They have these metal tabs. Why? Just there. So as the door opened, it just swung and hit me right there. I don't get it. It's so stupid. Until I'm upset about it. Anyway, I just stopped for a break. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to stop in Green Bay, too, for gas. <laughs> My head hurts. Wow, that door hit me really hard. Right there. And it took... Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. There's a, there's a big... Okay. <laughs> big. There's a little, a little mark. You can actually see it. Wow. Scrape my skin. Yeah, it was just the right height. So I was opening the door and walking out as you would when you open a door, you want to get out. And it just, <laughs> it just lined up perfectly. Oh, okay. That stinks. <laughs> Why do they have a tab at the top of the door? I'm sure they have the reasons, but don't they realize there are people of different heights and that door is going to whack them in the head? It's my fault for not paying attention. Even still, now it hurts. I'm such a whiner. Ow. It's funny, it hurts down here. So it must have, it was a tab about that big. Oh, imagine that. <laughs> I should go in and take a picture so you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you can picture it in your head. Just a little metal piece to stop the door from swinging out. All right, here we go. Boy, the lighting, something's reflecting off my face. Okay, I made it to Green Bay. Anyway, I'm gonna go on a fleet farm. I'm gonna look around, maybe buy something. Because, you know, we don't have a fleet farm where we live. If you purchase something at Fleet Farm, you get a four cent off coupon for gas at their gas station. So I'm gonna do that and save three cents a gallon versus going across the street. <laughs> I like to check out Fleet Farm anyway, so it's not that big a deal, not really. And my head still hurts. Is it bruising up? Uh, I don't know, we'll see. I'll have to part my hair the other way. <laughs> it doesn't go the other way. Not all is lost because they had pumpkin pie pumpkins. And October is going to be all things pumpkin. You'll see. Okay, I'm at the Fleet Farm gas station. And let's see, now I'm going to head home. I, uh, it's after 10 and there is a Costco, but it's like 17 miles from here, 17 minute drive. I'm like, do I really wanna go back that way and then come back? That'll take me, that'll add probably at least an hour and a half, maybe two hours to my trip, because if I go into Costco, I'm gonna to wanna to wander around. So I'm going to skip it. I wanted to check it out, but I'm going to skip it and just head home. All right, guys. Okay, I am driving across bridge that takes you from Marinette, Wisconsin to Menominee, Michigan. I've had some vehicle issues, so I'm a little hesitant here, but I'll be back in Michigan. <laughs> and there is the Welcome to Pier, Michigan sign. Yay! Alright, here we are. This is Menominee. Okay, see this gas station coming up? Years ago, I was traveling to Chicago, going to take my daughter to the airport down there, and our car broke down. Ooh, the price of gas. Look at that, $4.29 a gallon. Ooh, so we call that the breakdown spot because the car broke down, it lost a belt, and I had four kids with me, and I pulled into that gas station. <laughs> And then I called home. I called my older son and said, come and get us. So he did. Whew, 
Had to wait there for quite a while. Anyway, I've made it past the breakdown spot. Woohoo, that's pretty good. All right, let me tell you what's going on here. So I was driving along, and this is my sister's car. She asked me to take it for her. Uh, she lives in Chicago, and the weather's going to get bad, and she doesn't want to leave it on the street. She doesn't use it much, so she's like, can you just take it home with you and take care of it? And I'm like, I can do that. So I'm driving her car up to my house. So I'm driving along and I hear this beep, 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 and I see this red flash, and then it's gone. And I'm like, what is that? What, why is this car beeping at me? What's going on? It's a nice car. She's had some work done to it. It's nice condition. It's not rusty. <laughs> <laughs> which is always a plus and then later it was like when I'd slow down or change lanes it would go beep 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 and I'm like what is that well finally I was getting close to a town I was getting close to Marinette Wisconsin and it started beeping and, and it beeped longer and I'm like oh, it said low oil pressure stop engine I'm like what <laughs> here's the thing before I left, I said to Dutch, I said, I think we should check the oil level just to make sure, you know. So you drive older vehicles and you gotta make sure they've got oil in it. Well, he checked the oil, he said, yeah, there's plenty of oil. There might be a little bit, you know, too much oil, but there's plenty of oil. So I'm like, okay, good to go. So then when I got the low oil pressure, I'm like, oh no, I was on the phone with my son. And he says, well, is it a bad sensor? I'm like, I don't know, but I stopped. I was just getting into town, so I stopped at a Goodwill store and parked in the parking lot. And I'm like, I don't know what I should do here, you know? So I texted my sister and I said, has your car been throwing a, an error code here, Tanya? The oil pressure is low. <sighs> and so then, I, uh, I called Dutch to get his uh, advice, and now he's still down in Milwaukee. He's like, well, is there a big puddle of oil under the car? And I'm like, no, it looks dry. <laughs> and my sister says, well, in my, in my other Impala, it's an Impala. Oh, did you hear that? It's beeping at me again. And she said that that would happen all the time in her other car. She said it was fine. I'm like, okay, I don't want to wreck your engine driving it up home, you know. So, I, well, the first thing I did then was I did check the oil. But it's a synthetic oil, and I have somehow I have a problem reading it on the dipstick, right? So you, you pull the dipstick out, you wipe it off, you guys all know this, and you put it back in, you pull it out, and you see where the level is. Well, to me, it's clear or almost clear and it's really really hard to see and I remember on another car one of our cars had that issue too and I'm like I can't tell if there's oil on it I don't know how long it's gonna keep beeping like that ah. so anyway um, so my son says well you pull it out and you hold it on top of your whatever you're using you know your paper towel tissue whatever and then you see where the oil is that way, where you can check the oil level that way. And I'm like, well, there is oil on it, but I can't, it doesn't seem like enough because I'm used to driving old vehicles and there's, if there's oil, there's oil. You can definitely tell, except in that other car I was talking about. And I can't remember which one it was. Anyway, so <laughs> my sister said, yeah, don't worry about it. And I'm like, okay, but how long is that beeping going to last? She said, yeah, that's irritating. <laughs> I'm like, oh no. <laughs> And I talked to Dutch and he said, well, you could go to the auto parts store and you could buy a oil pressure sensor, but you don't have any tools to replace it because I don't have any tools. It's not my car. I should have grabbed some tools from his, um, his trunk. <laughs> but, you know, it's in good shape, this car. Didn't think we need it. So, whew, that's my story. That just uh, gets me a little bit um, nervous, anxious. I'm not really a nervous, anxious person, so I said, okay, you both said go for it. I'm going to hit the road and hope I make it home because there's a lot of empty road between where I was at and where I'll be home, and it's beeping at me more, and I don't like it because I want to get stuck on the road. Yeah, Dutch will be coming along here, but that'll be in probably six hours or something, <laughs> seven hours. So I'd be stuck waiting for him that long. I could call home and say, can somebody come down and pick me up? But, you know, then I'm waiting for them too. So, 
oh boy, and I don't want to, you know, I just don't want to be stuck on the side of the road with nothing around it. And I know it happens to people all the time and it turns out okay, but I don't want it to happen to me. So this has turned out to be an excellent day, but let me tell you, the sky is a beautiful blue, there are clouds, the temperature is 59 degrees. I am back in the UP, nothing to worry about, nothing to worry about. It's a great day. <laughs> There's the lake out there. Or the bay the bay of Green Bay okay so I've just been following this truck he's going a little slower than I'd like and normally I'd pass but I'm a little bit anxious to do that look at that beautiful sky the trees are starting to look dim you know the leaves are starting to change color I've seen a couple of brilliant trees but down this area they're not really We'll see, we'll see. Well, these are looking just kind of brown instead of pretty colors. Before I left home, I was like, oh, it's a great year. The colors just look so pretty this year. Mm. Little update, it's been oh, about an hour or longer because I stopped at a store. There's this outlet store in a town and I got went there and I spent like 60 bucks. Shh, don't tell Dutch. <laughs> I just bought a bunch of stuff. It makes up for not going to Costco, and I actually saved money there, so it was a better deal, Dutch, really. <laughs> anyway, the car is still throwing the uh, message that there's low oil pressure, so it must be the sensor because I've driven over an hour with this car, and no big deal. Okay, and there's some more sights to see. I'll be glad to get home and then I'll go online and I'll order well I'll check the prices first but I'll probably end up ordering an oil pressure sensor gauge from Rock Auto because they tend to be the least expensive so I'll probably do that or I'll be lazy and I'll ask Dutch to do that for me we'll see we'll see okay maybe it's just not lazy maybe it's just I just won't have time. I'll get home and I'll have so much stuff to do. It'll be crazy. So much stuff. Anyway, I'm happy. I've just got a little ways to go. Here's a nice little stretch in the UP. It looks very much like the Upper Peninsula. You know, you have some variations, but this is very typical. Uh, maybe not the four-lane highway, but the trees. <laughs> such a pretty blue sky today. Okay, and here, here are more trees. A little bit different. <laughs> I was going to try to show you the colors changing on the trees, but I guess I drove through that section. Well, not that there aren't here. Obviously, there are. See? A few. Anyway. Okay, this is a prettier section. Look at trees. I just love this time of year. Don't you? What's your favorite time of year? Let me know. There's a shadow. He doesn't recognize me. Oh, the dogs hear me. Oh, oh, Ernie, where are you? Come on, Ernie, come greet me. Come on, Ernie. Come on, Ernie. It's me. It's me. <laughs> Let's see what he does when I get out of the car. Ernie. Hi, Ernie. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? I don't want to reach out for you. Don't bite me. Can I pet you? Can I pet you? Did you miss me? Oh, he's so soft. He's so soft. Hello, Ernie. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Okay, he's not biting. He's just testing. Just testing. Yeah, I missed you too. <laughs> 